In this lesson, we will discuss what are personal computers and the various types of personal computers. Personal computer or a PC refers to any computer that is meant to be used by a single person only. Although it is possible for a personal computer to be shared by multiple people, for example, computers in your school's computer lab. Although they are shared by multiple people, but only one person can use the computer at any given time. So personal computer basically refers to any computer that is meant to be used by a single person at any given time. Although it is possible for a personal computer to be shared by multiple people, but only one person at a time will be using a personal computer. A personal computer is also called a microcomputer. Why? Because personal computers belong to the smallest category of computers that are meant for personal use. Please bear in mind, the term personal computer is most commonly used to refer to a desktop computer. So, the term personal computer or a PC, it refers to any computer that is meant to be used by a single person at any given moment. But nonetheless, this term is most commonly used to refer to a desktop computer. In this lesson, we will be discussing about the different types of personal computers including desktop computers. There are seven main types of personal computers. Number one, desktop computers. Number two, workstations. Number three, laptop computers. Number four, notebook computers. Number five, tablet computers. Number six, handheld computers. And number seven, smartphones. Now let's see what is a desktop computer. A desktop computer is the most common type of personal computer. These are the computers that you come across every day, for example, in your homes, schools and workplaces. Owing to their large size, they are not easy to carry around and therefore we may say that our desktop computer is not very portable. Our desktop computer has been designed in a way so as to make it sit on a table or a desk and that's why we call them desktop computers. A desktop computer is quite capable of performing a multitude of tasks ranging from communication, photo editing, playing games, watching videos and much more. So regardless of whether you are a college or a university student or a nuclear physicist for that matter, a desktop computer is indispensable to learning and research. The main component of a desktop computer is the system unit. What is a system unit? System unit is the casing that houses the critical parts of a desktop computer. 
all the processing and storage devices are contained in the system unit. So all the critical devices such as your random access memory, your power supply, your video card, sound card, hard disk, motherboard, all such devices are contained in the system unit. So the system unit is basically the casing that houses the important components of a desktop computer including all the storage and processing devices. The system unit comes in two different variants. The system unit could either be horizontally oriented, which means it sits flat on a desk or a table as shown in this figure. The horizontally oriented system unit has the advantage that it allows the user to place the monitor on its top. The other variant is the vertically oriented system unit which is also referred to as the tower model. The tower models have become more common in the recent years. The tower models allow the user to place the monitor next to the system unit just as shown in this figure on the right. Now let's see what is a workstation. A workstation is basically a desktop computer but a well-equipped desktop computer. So a workstation is a desktop computer that has more processing capabilities, additional memory, and graphics handling capabilities than a standard desktop computer and that's the reason workstation is more speedy than a standard desktop computer. A workstation is basically optimized for scientists, uh, engineers and other people dealing with computer animations and who need system that has better speed and, per, uh, and ability to perform different sophisticated tasks such as graphics handling and game development. So workstations, as we have just discussed, have high resolution monitors and accelerated graphics handling capabilities. So this makes the workstations ideal for advanced architectural or engineering designs, 3D modeling, computer animations, and video editing. The next type of a personal computer is a laptop computer. Because people normally place these devices in their laps, hence the name laptop computers. Laptop computers are preferred by those users who require the power of a full-size desktop computer and therefore they can de avail themselves of the laptop computers. Why? Because laptop computers are microcomputers in true sense. Owing to their small size and portability, laptop computers belong to the ca uh, category of mobile computers. Mobile computers are those computers that are easy to carry around because of their small size.
in so far as the size of a laptop computer is concerned it varies between 13 to 15 inches a standard laptop weighs around 1.5 to 2.5 kg some of the laptop computers are designed to be plugged to a docking station which may include a full size keyboard mouse and other devices docking stations provide additional ports that enable the laptop computer to be connected to different devices or to a computer network in ex in exactly the same way as a desktop computer so the docking station basically gives you additional ports whereby you can connect your laptop computer to other devices such as a full size keyboard a mouse and you can also use a docking station to connect your laptop to a computer network much like a desktop computer you can see a laptop being connected to a docking station in this figure on the right The next type of a personal computer is a notebook computer. Notebook computers are basically the same as a laptop computer except for the fact that they are smaller in size and lighter in weight than laptop computers. A notebook computer is shown in this figure on the right. The terms Notebook computer and laptop computer are often used interchangeably. For example, you can use the term notebook computer to mean a laptop computer, but there is a subtle difference between a notebook computer and a laptop computer, okay? And what is that difference? The difference is that notebook computers are lighter in weight and smaller in size as compared to laptop computers. Now let's discuss what is a tablet computer. Tablet personal computers offer all the functionality of notebook computers but they are lighter in weight and smaller in size and they can accept input from a special purpose pen which is called a stylus. The stylus or a digital pen is used to tap on the screen or it may also be used to write directly on the screen. Many tablet personal computers have a built-in microphone and special purpose software that accepts input from user's voice. Tablet personal computers use tailored versions of standard softwares and can even be plugged to a computer network. It may be possible to connect few models to a keyboard and a full-fledged monitor. In some of the models, a tablet PC may be connected, may be converted into a notebook PC using a book cover keyboard. So in this figure on the right you can see a tablet computer has been converted into a notebook PC using a book cover keyboard. So using a book cover keyboard it may be possible to convert a tablet PC into a notebook PC. Okay. Now let's discuss what are handheld computers. Handheld computers are those computers that are small enough to fit in your hand or place in your pocket. 
The most common example of a handheld computer is a personal digital assistant or a PDA which is nothing more than a small appointment book. PDAs are used for notes taking, maintaining a list of telephone numbers and addresses and keeping oneself informed of important dates and agenda items. It is possible to synchronize a handheld computer with a desktop computer so as to exchange data. Some PDAs allow the users to write on the screen using a pen. Handheld computers provide features such as access to internet using a wireless connection, global positioning systems or GPS, music players and digital cameras and can even include a cell phone. Some of the PDAs allow the users to input his voice. Now let's see what are smartphone computers. Smartphones are a hybrid of personal digital assistant and cell phone. Because smartphones offer sophisticated features that are not normally present in cellular phones that's why they are referred to as smartphones. These advanced features could be access to web and email, high resolution digital cameras, music players, as well as the ability to install different types of mobile apps. This brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope you are now clear about the different types of computers that are meant to be used by a single person only. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next lesson.